Do they have any idea what's beyond the... What does true isolation feel like in gaming? There are many ways a game can try to make a player feel hopeless and lost, whether that be keeping the experience strictly single player to isolate someone, or by the environment and sound design alone with a lack of anything around the player. When you take an already existing internet horror concept that plays off of these same emotions and develop it into a game, sticking as true to the original vision as possible, this is the result you get, the complex series. Um, but let's just take a few steps back for a second. It's 2024 now and I'm sure I don't need to explain to you what the backrooms are, especially considering you clicked on this video. However, how the backrooms has translated over into games has been an interesting thing to watch, as all these developers portray it in different ways. Some would add tons of levels with monsters in each one you avoid, others go for a more subtle approach with the horror not being who is in there with you, but instead the lack of anything being there full stop. This is what this video is going to focus on more, as we talk about the complex found footage and expedition, and what makes these two Backrooms games stand out. I guess a good place to start would be how these games give people fear and scares them. I mean, after all, these are horror games. Before I talk about the complex games in particular, I would just like to mention that these types of games are just not for everyone. Horror is very subjective, I mean, some things that might be scary to some just won't be to others, and of course that's okay, I mean, that's why phobias exist. So if you don't find the horror in the complex games scary, then they obviously just aren't for you, and maybe this video isn't for you. But I personally think that these games are scarier than the ones that are multiplayer and have big scary monsters chasing you. If you think otherwise, well, that's why all these different types of Backrooms games exist in the first place. Anyways, what's so different about the complex game's way of creating fear? Well, I mean, first of all, there's no monsters that can kill you in these games. You can catch glimpses of something stalking you or trailing behind you at times, sure. Oh! but nothing is ever roaming around looking for you. The games add in these monsters to not only have the power of psychological horror on its side, but now also the genuine fear that something you don't even know the look of is stalking you around. Oh, yeah, did I mention that this statue isn't even the monster? Something else is moving that around. Anyways, we're getting off track. For someone who may be used to seeing all these other Backrooms games, this idea of having no roaming creatures might sound crazy and you might just think, well, how is it scary if it has no monsters? Well, these games do a very good job at putting the idea of a threat in your head. Before playing these games, you obviously are at least a tiny bit aware of what the Backrooms are as a concept, and that it is based on horror. And from that alone, you might expect to see a monster, but when you don't, and not for quite a while, it turns into psychological horror as the tension builds in your head for a threat that isn't even there. When I was playing through the complex expedition for the first time, this same idea got into my head so badly that at probably like four times during my playthrough, I thought I heard or seen something, only to watch the clips back later to realise that it was all just my brain playing tricks on me because I knew that this was a horror game and I was expecting a scare at like any moment. The game tricked me into being scared without even having to do anything. What also probably doesn't help is how realistic the camera is in this game. I am not kidding when I say that these games are probably the most realistic looking games in my whole Steam library. Granted, it does benefit from the low quality VHS look with all the noise and the fisheye lens, but wow does it look good. It also does a really good job of making you not want to go into the dark areas, even if you have a flashlight. It also has some pretty good sound design to go with it. These games feel like you are playing a Kane Pixels video, and it's probably about as close as you're gonna get to that for now. 
let's take a moment to talk about the complex itself. The entire place has always felt like a code was just ran through a computer to try and copy normal human architecture. And the result you get is what you see in the games. When people typically think of the backrooms, they are most likely going to think of the yellow hallways. I mean, that's what the original image was of, so it makes sense. But adding all of these extra areas that are still from the real world, but don't really fit into the surroundings, empty of all people and furniture, is a great addition, as it makes the place that more mysterious and does really make you wonder why this place exists and how it exists. The camera being this realistic makes the situation more immersive and more believable, which is needed, to be honest, with all the architecture that wouldn't really make sense in the real world. So, I guess to wrap everything up, instead of relying on traditional scares like some big scary creature, these games just let atmosphere and the emptiness of these infinite rooms build paranoia over a long period of time, which makes any scares that the game do pull on you that more impacting. It's a more long drawn out horror with a mix of psychological and just genuine fear thrown in there instead of quick snappy jump scares. Of course, the complex games are not the first games to do this by any means, but they are some of the only Backrooms games that I have seen that don't just build upon what the fandom has made up surrounding the Backrooms, but instead just tries to stick to the concept at its core and what it originally was, to simply make you feel confused, afraid, and alone.